Hi, this is Mo from Paul Frederico Photography. Welcome to another edition of View. Where I go behind the scenes of some of the photographs that I've taken. Now, some of you have been asking for uh, viewfinders on places I've been that I've used the Z6 II. And this is a really good example of one where I used the Z6 II exclusively. So where I'm going to take you right now is to Ecuador. More importantly, and more specifically, the Amazon in Ecuador. Uh, this is um, a tributary off of the Napo River. And this whole area is owned by a tribe called, or a clan called the Anyangu, which means the ant people. And they call themselves the Anyangu, the ant people, because they're very, very, um, they work hard and they're very, very diligent in what they do. This is a really beautiful story for me. And one of the reasons I chose this place in particular, there are, there are I think there's at least one or two other places um, in other areas off of the Napo River, but this goes much deeper down into the Amazon, into the Amazon basin in Ecuador. This picture that you're looking at right now is the lodge. And this was conceived and built by the Anyangu people. The beautiful story behind this is that the, a lot of the, the clans, a lot of the tribes along the Napo River in Ecuador have leased their land to Chinese oil companies because they're desperate for money and the Chinese oil companies have come in and, you know, given them a lot of money, but, you know, destruction of the environment, um, eventual destruction of the tribes themselves, and the Anyangu people decided to go a completely different way. So about 20 years ago, they came up with an idea of doing eco-tourism. And they own and operate this themselves. They retain all the funds from this venture, and they put it back into the tribe, back into the facilities. And I will show you in the next photograph like this. So this is the, the, the village proper that we got to go to and uh, meet some of the people, which I'll show you in a minute. This is the doctor's building. Now, we're out here deep in the Amazon basin. It is a two hour uh, ride on the Napo River by high speed boat. And then another two hour um, hand canoed uh, small, uh, small boat um, up to this area, this lake. And the area is just incredible. I mean, I, I, I would love to go back and hopefully someday I will. But because of this decision not to give their land to the oil companies, not to lease their land to the oil companies and to do ecotourism, they got together as a tribe, as a clan, and decided we're kind of going to give up our natural way of life. We're going to stop our heavy fishing. We're going to stop our hunting so that we become more conservation minded and that the wildlife stays and the wildlife comes back. What the fuck? Seriously? That really pisses me off. Sorry. I'll put it down. I don't even know where I was. Okay. We can back it up. Let's look. I right, know. Just let me. So all of the the money that, that goes into this, they've decided that what they're going to do is give up their natural way of life. Um, no fishing, no hunting, in favor of conservation and making sure that the wildlife population thrives. Now, they do only allow one group of, or one family of otters in the area at any one time because the otters can eat so many piranha that there is no 
per, there are no piranha uh, left for the caimans to feed on or, you know, other animals to feed on. So um, that's, you know, that's the one thing that they do do, that they do do. That's the one thing that they do uh, is they do keep uh, the otter population down to one single family. But so this photograph is a permanent uh, hospital, a doctor's office. Um, there is a doctor and two nurses, all educated in Quito, and paid to come here and live permanently, with time off, of course, um, in the Anyangu village, right in the center here. And then the next photograph I'm going to show you is the school. Now, the really cool thing about this is that they've got 10 classrooms here. So there's five buildings and they're separated into halves. So they've got 10 classrooms. The really, really cool thing about this is it's not just for their clan. They have opened it up to any of the clans along the river that would like to come and use the facilities, uh, get educated in their children, educated in the school, and if they need to visit a doctor, the doctors are there. Why have they done this? Because they are communal people. They believe in giving back. And they've been fortunate. They've been able to do this for their clan, their tribe. They really want to be able to do that for neighboring clans or tribes as well. This is one of the things that to me was so important to bring to you and to show you that, you know, we think of in the West, when we talk about um, tribal people, we think of um, one tribe, you know, pitted against another tribe. And that just simply isn't always the case. Um, I, I've talked about it before with the Maasai, how um, the different tribes helped each other out in the Maasai Mara and the Serengeti. Same thing here in Ecuador off of the Napo River. Um, this tribe helping neighboring tribes to also thrive. Because guess what? If your neighbor thrives, you thrive, right? Okay. So now I'm going to show you the people. And these, these ladies were fantastic. They were so lovely. Uh, these are, um, it, it, they're all part of the Quichua Nation, but the Anyangu tribe is um, a sect or a clan of the Quichua Nation. And these lovely ladies were so wonderful. They danced with us. They, they showed us their, their, um, their dance, and then they made us get up and dance with them. Um, it wasn't hard to do. It was actually a lot of fun. Uh, and, and then here they cooked us something, some uh, banana, plantain, and, and some really interesting uh, nuts and things, and then also a, a tea. And now the tea was really interesting. So interesting that I brought some home. Why? Because it gives you a real um, caffeine boost, super caffeinated. In fact, one of the stories they told us was that the, the, the clans still drink it, but they would gather together in these large areas like we were, thatched roof areas like we were in. And four o'clock in the morning, they would all drink this tea together. From there, the warriors would go out and hunt, hunt for food, and they had energy. Everybody had energy to get the things done that they needed to get done. So, yeah, it gives you energy. Really cool stuff. Um, you can get it here in the United States uh, you can, off of Amazon because, you know, well, you know, Amazon the company, not Amazon the country or the area. You know what I mean? So you can get it on Amazon here in the U.S. Um, and it's, it's really actually kind of a neat thing. So it's a tea from the Amazon. So this lady is making uh, food for us, uh, you know, snacks and for us to try local snacks as well as the tea. This lady, um, and, and now I just want to back this up for a second. None of them spoke any English. We had a naturalist guide with us that he was able to translate. He was He's also part of the, this clan, but he was educated in Quito for the purpose of being part of the tourism and being an English guide. Um, there are others that are educated in uh, other languages, German, uh, French. So they've really done this the right way. So he was the translator. And this woman showed us all of the artifacts that they use. She's the one that told us the stories. And 
just incredibly lovely people. And this, of course, is my favorite. I mean, what a smile. I love it when I, I capture a smile um, that's just so genuine. I mean, look, look at that genuine happiness. You know, we, we're always so at each other's throats in the world. And, and then you, you see something like this and you're like, this woman is just, just happy. You know, why can't we all be like that, right? So if you get the chance to go to Ecuador, um, especially the Amazon basin in Ecuador, I really, really would suggest this. It's called the Napo Wildlife Center and just an incredible place, uh, all run by local people from the tribe, from the Anyangu tribe, and just a breathtaking a uh, few days that I was able to spend with these people. That was my story on kind of behind these photographs. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can check out some of these photographs on Instagram or my Facebook page or even my website. Thanks for watching.